Yeah, so okay. so what's the nutrition? This is for, for the slots or yeah, for who? This is for the sauce. Just a bit of extra to make sure um, they get enough vitamins and everything. So, the carrots, yeah, these, these a few are eggs and some chowder. Right, so mainly what's the, the dietary? Like, like, so, Becky will tell you all about okay. it, but it's mainly leaves. Okay. It's mainly leaves. Um, and slowly we just stop yes. giving the vegetables. We do track our slots when we release them in other places, and we were finding that they were losing weight. They weren't doing very well. Reintroducing sloths. They're very hard. And it's because um, a female will only have one baby and she'll spend a full year raising her baby on her body and the baby will continue living how it learned to live. So they're creatures of habit, that's how they survive. So we raise our sloths here, we take them away and we release them and then all they need, they know what to do is to come back and live the way that they were raised. So it is a problem. Release them down there, away from the center and we will be tracking them to make sure they're okay, but it's the same kind of vegetation as we have here. Yes, that was part of my, yeah. That, so what I'm doing is trying to get this this program sort of improved in terms of um, the, the success is high. So it's really hard to harvest the leaves from the top of those trees um, no, and to just can't reach up. basis as well. Um, so we're working on it, um, but at the moment here they are having breakfast. Mm -hmm. Um, now before we move on, does anyone know it's actually a really good way to survive? Um, they just move so slowly, nothing sees them. So you don't get eaten by your... They do that. They get eaten all the time while they're pooping. All their predators, all the big cats, eat them while they're pooping. Why would you do that? Just poop from the top of the tree. Yeah. Nobody can understand it. Um, honestly, I spent two years trying to find out and I failed, so... <laughs> Embarrassingly, um, baby slots go in a different direction, <laughs> and the poor volunteer in charge of them is knocking on the back as well. Um, but they're totally different. Animals. What about the green ones? Where can you find them? The green ones, all of them get green when they're in the wild, um, particularly if it's rained a lot. Right now, it's very dry around here, so we've not had much rain, so the slots aren't as green as normal. Um, and these ones do not get very wet, so that's why. So mainly gray and uh, brown, huh? Mainly uh, gray and gray brown, and brown. Yeah. yeah, come on. Oh, let me how old she is because she was born and um, she was the first baby born in captivity 47 years ago and she has made it this far and um, all the others are younger than her that we know of so wild sloths might live until they're 100 we just really don't know because no one's been following one for that long so um, a single eyeball um he can't see uh, he was born like that we've got him as a baby he was found on, on the floor we were going to euthanize him, um, but we decided that we can actually give him quite a nice life. Um, so we raised him. He lives mostly on the shoulder of a volunteer. Can't see to land on anything, but we couldn't find him anywhere. We sent out search parties for three days looking for the blind parrot, and we got so desperate, we set up a cell. But if the bird can talk, we're never allowed to release it into the wild. Um, because he has been having some health problems recently. He's having to be hand fed, and as you can see,